back on the project, the Atlas conversion to my 68 Pontiac Le Mans. Uh, last weekend we left with uh, the engine not fitting. We tried to do a dry fit and um, could not get, even with spacers in, with the engine mounts and stuff, uh, the oil pan to clear the cross member. Uh, so I did a little bit of research and um, came up with some engine mount options. Now I'll show you what those are. Hopefully they're going to do it. Uh, we'll find out today. So to quickly show you here, here's what we had. These are the frame towers and here is the mount that goes to the engine. This is what I had um, last week. So this goes, uh, so the engine's mounted here and then these go over the frame towers and then there's a big bolt that goes through the through that hole there. And the problem is, is I needed more height this way because the oil pan was hitting that uh, cross member there. Um, one thing I found out is that there are tall and skinny frame mounts or uh, frame towers and there's short and wide. I uh, did not know this but the ones I have are tall and skinny but these mounts I have are actually for the short and, um, and wide. Look at the play back and forth. I, this is how the motor was in the car, the uh, Gen 1. So anyhow, so I started doing some research to see if uh, there's different heights on this portion and there so was. here's the mount I had last week. Um, this is the short and, and wide. Uh, this is an aftermarket. This is an energy sus suspensions, uh, polyurethane mount, really nice mount. Um, <clears throat> so how it's measured, the short measured to the top of the hole to the back is two inches. I found this mount, which is for a 71 Chevelle, uh, I don't know why, it was listed as a 307. Um, but this is for a um, for the tall, skinny um, frame towers. This measures, it be a little hard to see, but it measures about two and three eighths, maybe a little bit over. So I pick up three eighths of an inch in height this way. So I checked, uh, I really like these mounts. These are real nice solid mounts. Um, and uh, this is like $8 from uh, AutoZone and I'm not putting a pair of $8 motor mounts on this project. So, called up Energy Suspensions and got this one. So now this one, with the spacer plate on the back, we measure up at exactly two and a half. So I'm picking up a half inch in height. Hopefully that's gonna be enough. We're gonna find out today. Also, these are skinnier this way for the skinny frame mounts that I have. So they're like two and three eighths versus the old ones I had, which were uh, two and a half. So the eighth inch play, that's what you saw rattling around there. So we're gonna put these things on and drop the motor and see what okay. happens. Okay, to go back to uh, just quickly what we did last week was these are the Dirty Dingo slider mounts. <clears throat> this is the front of the engine. These things are adjustable, so I can get my uh, setback set right. Um, all the way forward with the Dirty Dingoes is making the engine mount same distance from the back of the block uh, that the Gen 1 is. Um, I know that's not going to be enough space, so we're going to start with um, it about an inch forward, and we'll see where we go from there. I know we were moving it all around last week, but. Uh, we really kind of got to start from scratch with these new mounts. So we'll slide it uh, about an inch forward. I'll measure that to be accurate, and then we'll get it on the hoist. Two, I think we actually go three quarters. Let's try that first. And three quarters back. How are we looking? Clear? What are you doing, Marcus? Attempting to put a screw into the motor. Okay, that's a that's a bolt. It's a motor mount pin. Okay, is it going or not? No. What's holding it up? Uh, it's not lined up. Okay, we got to go up or down with the motor. Judging it on this one. What are you doing, Marcus? Air ratcheting spark plug stuff. Correct. Come on, muscles. Yes, sir. 
All right, so here is where we're at. Um, the motor is in the car. Uh, the hoist is still hooked up because uh, I don't have the trans on it to support the back end. But basically, um, the motor mounts work. You see, pins in on that side. Pins in on that side. I'll try to show you here underneath. Um, there's about a half inch of clearance up for the oil pan on the cross member. Headers are on. The passenger side header clears everything fine. Lots of space. Unfortunately, the passenger or the driver's side, uh, if you can see, it's hitting the block for the brakes. Which, to move that, means basically replumbing all the brakes. <laughs> so that's going to have to be something that'll be done or have to be done. And underneath, another issue is um, um, that the headers ride really high. And I'll try to show you. I don't know if it'll work. And or not. Uh, I think clearance on the firewall is about what it, what the uh, Gen One was. I believe I scooted the motor forward. Um, I don't know. Um, something like uh, I think three quarters of an inch, something like that. So uh, probably have to do something with the shifter handle inside. But next step will be um, get the bell housing and trans on and see if something it all else fits. to check uh, is clearance of the linkage to the oil pan, which it read about it can be really close and it is really close. So that's the wheels turned all the way to the right, uh, sorry, yeah, to the right. Um, there is maybe an eighth of an inch clearance there to the uh, tie rod end, to the oil pan, not much. Um, turn them the other way. Well, see unfortunately, on this side, it hits the pan. Uh, looks like it could be a lot worse, but I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know if they get a different pan or what. This pan's supposed to work. Anyhow. Hmm. Some more research. 